When I was approached by Ted to give this talk, I thought, how fitting, nonsense. I used to get told off for drawing nonsense on my school books, and now I get paid to do it for Hollywood movies. <laughs> but I also got asked another question, and it's a question I get asked a lot, whether it's students that I'm teaching or someone reaches out via email, and that's, how can I do what you do? And I thought about this. I mean, I really sat with it. It's Ted. And I have the answer for you. You can't. <laughs> but bear with me, because I want to invite you on this deep dive, because I think it's kind of fun. So what do I do? I'm a concept designer. And for the past 20 years, I've designed elements for the film industry, from monsters and robots, to vehicles, to cinematic keyframes, to a sniper rifle that folds out of an innocent-looking briefcase that you might have seen on a certain James Bond film called Skyfall. I've been told over the years that I have an eye for this. I, I spot things. I remember things. Things catch my attention, and I pay attention to unusual things. And this is what I would like to draw your attention to, how to train your eye to see this. And for me, it started really early on. Cute, huh? <laughs> Around the age of four, something really traumatic happened to me. Terrible. I was with my grandparents who lived by the sea on the Isle of Wight, and something happened. I saw the movie Jaws. <laughs> I was terrified. An underwater monster based on something that really existed. My four-year-old head just exploded. Um, I became obsessed with sharks, and there wasn't a school desk, a school book, a piece of paper that didn't have a shark fin on it at some point. Then the same happened with me with Star Wars. I was drawing X-wings and uh, other spaceships and lightsabers. Um, some years later, I saw the movie Aliens with Sigourney Weaver, and I was drawing Geiger's Alien and all that futuristic tech. It just fascinated the hell out of me. I drew this stuff all the time. For me, the VHS home video store was the ultimate art gallery. You couldn't ask for a more concentrated source of inspiration. And my friends and I used to go from school, and we'd just stand in there, just staring at the covers of these movies. Wow. Just blown away. Robocop. Half man, half robot. Policeman. Keeps his gun in his leg. Oh, my God. The terrifying man with a burned face that can kill you in your dream with razors for fingers. I mean, like, get me a pen. Now, this was pre-internet, so you couldn't just Google your favorite character or favorite film scene. You had to rely on finding these images in books. And I became obsessed with collecting film books and magazines and would just pour through those pages trying to, you know, find things that I like, and I'd draw them. But I wouldn't only just draw the monsters and the tech and the scenes that I would see from these movies. I also became partially interested in creating this scary illusion of special effects makeup. And, and for me, it was amazing that this combination of latex, food coloring, cotton wool, and breakfast cereals could make something that could elicit a really, real strong emotional reaction. <laughs> <laughs> And much to the upset of my mother, I became quite interested in special effects makeup. My friends that would come over and play, instead of sitting down and playing video games, I would sit them at my desk and ask them if they would like lacerations or third degree burns. <laughs> <laughs> and as a child who puts on a makeup, as a child might put on a tiger mask and roar, my friends and I would stagger into the kitchen screaming. Interesting enough, about eight years later, whilst doing work experience on my first movie, Reign of Fire, I got to use some of these makeup techniques as we were fabricating a, a life-size dragon for the movie. Now, none of this was learned in school. This is all just kind of like my weird and fascinating imagination just reaching out and grabbing onto unusual things. In school, I was told that I was a daydreamer. <laughs> Head in the clouds. 
absent-minded. That's my favorite one. My therapist calls me visually dominant. <laughs> I'd actually agree with all those descriptions apart from the absent-minded part. I would argue it was too much going on in my mind rather than the absence of anything. So sat at my desk in school. Where did my head go when I was accused of these things? What was I seeing? I'd like to introduce you to the idea of fireflies. Catching an idea is like catching a firefly. They're incredibly alluring. You can't always see them, and you have to chase them. And even when you think you've got one, it can still escape and slip through your fingers. You can't just make an amazing idea happen. They're so elusive, and you have no idea when one is, when, when, when one is going to appear. And even if you manage to catch it, you're screaming, get me a pen, get me a pen, get me a pen, before it escapes. Now I'm terrible at maths, remembering numbers and dates, but visually I'm very strong. I have a very, very strong visual memory, and I can recall the oddest moments, the strangest things, textures, moments, sensations, sounds, smells, colors, tastes. These things catch my attention, my eye, and I'll zone out, sometimes taking interest in the most unusual things at the most unsuspecting moment. How I look at the world, what triggers my fireflies? It can happen even when I'm traveling to work. Looks pretty sci-fi, huh? Don't recognize it? It's actually the articulated part on a bus. You see that every day. But for me, it was something incredibly high-tech. And again, I would zone out, just staring at it, thinking what else it could be. My parents were textile designers. And when I was growing up, my mother had these old vintage dressmaking mannequins in her studio. And I remember them. They were kind of borderline creepy, yet techy enough to be kind of interesting. And they had this dial in the middle to adjust the size. If you've seen the movie Dune, you might recognize them as the training dummies. <laughs> my mom saw this movie and she was like, I saw my dummies. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like, to, I'd like to show you one of my favorite fireflies that I caught. Whilst working on Guardians of the Galaxy, I was asked to design the main character's pistols, Star-Lord. After a few hours, I came up with these designs you see. And they were kind of okay. I knew that it was sort of, we were looking at a lot of retro sci-fi stuff and it had to be kind of a bit funky, but you know, looking at these designs, they were sort of without soul, kind of without life, without character. You don't know who they belonged to. They were quite anonymous. And I think the production designer could feel this. And we talked about the opening scene and in the script it described this character dancing kind of clumsily but with confidence over the surface of the planet and he's listening to this song, Redbone, Come Get Your Love. And the designer asked me, do you know this? And I said, no. And he, he got me to call it up on YouTube. And something fantastic happened. My head just exploded with kind of retro 70s visuals. In the, in the script, the character was taken from Earth when he was about eight years old. And I started thinking, well, what was I into when I was eight? And I started thinking about, you know, my favorite Hot Wheels toys, those little miniature cars and, and Frisbees and kind of little racing cars, little scale electric sets and arcades and just my head was just popping. And suddenly it went from a boring design brief to playtime. Thoughts of my childhood also took me to my favorite part of the week, Saturday morning cartoons. Sitting there in front of the TV in my pajamas, eating a bowl of cereal, otherwise known as home office. Um, <laughs> like... <laughs> I remembered one of my favorite cartoons. It was this cartoon series. It was a sci-fi western uh, called Brave Star. And, um, Marshal Bravestar was a sheriff who policed his town with his cyborg horse, but the thing that I remember is he had a pistol with a barrel on the underside. And I used to draw a lot of ray guns and stuff because I love Star Wars, but it was the first time I'd ever seen a pistol with a barrel on the underside. And the designer for Guardians was always pushing for something kind of unusual, you know, try and think out of the box a little bit. So I thought this was quite cool and unique, so I tried a version of my design where I put a barrel 
on the underside. Then again, my love of Hot Wheels cars. As a kid, I remember a lot of those toy, car, toy models had the hood missing and a supercharged engine would be inside. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. And the character of Star-Lord was described to me as a kind of guy who would fix his own spaceship. So I thought, well, maybe he could pimp his own gun and he could take out the engine of the gun and put in a supercharged engine. And a bit like in the spirit of Hot Wheels or Hot Rods, he could leave the cover off the gun, kind of showing off a bit because that was sort of his, he, was, he had this sort of show off character that I was starting to discover. So here we go. These are the hot rod pistol designs with exposed engines. And I'm also starting to bring in some go faster stripes. And they actually ended up choosing my Brave Star design with the second barrel underneath. As I started to move into 3D to develop the pistol, the production designer told me that he wants to feel that it works. Huh? He elaborated a bit. He used to be a furniture, an antique furniture restorer. He was all about texture. So when he saw this stuff, he wanted to see that it had lived, it had been used. Um, so how could I show that other than some scratches, that this thing is a ray gun with power and it gets hot? Well, I used to be a special effects technician before I got into the art department. And I remember from welding, as you take the tip of the welder across the metal, it makes this fantastic noise like, intense frying bacon. And it also leaves this colored scar on the metal. And I was like, oh, cool. And where else do you see this? On exhausts, on car exhausts, on a motorbike exhaust. And again, this is stuff that I'm seeing and kind of going, oh, again, kind of catching my eye. But this is called bluing. This heat discoloration is called bluing. So I brought this texture over to my finished pistol. So here we have the final approved design, the final Brave Star double barrel hot rod with exposed engines, heat textured bluing on it. This isn't just a gun design. This is my Saturday morning cartoon, my favorite hot rod car, my experience of welding metal. Those were my creative fireflies, all triggered by music. One of the cool things about when you are working on movies, and I, I, I work in the art department, is that you get to go down to the prop shop and you get to see them building your design. And now it's starting to focus again. And then the next time you see it, it's on the screen. Now, again, for rights reasons, I can't show you the film still, but this is a little sketch of the scene, and I'm sure you all know the movie. And rather poetically, my playtime was rewarded with more play. Nerf had a merchandise deal with Marvel, so they actually built a Nerf gun of my design. My, uh, my inner four-year-old was very, very happy. <laughs> and, you know, underneath all this, this talk, these movies, these memories, is something very, very pure and fun. We all did this. It's a child at play. It's me at play. And as we grow up, we tend to lose this connection with our inner child. Pens get taken out of our hand and we get told to pay attention, get your head out of the clouds. I was lucky to grow up with artistic parents who encouraged my dreaming, my, my play, my drawing, and this was actively discouraged in school. Teachers, try to find out what the students are into. Films, comics, manga, game, fashion. Get them to lead with it in some of their projects and not to dismiss it. Students, you have to listen to the teachers. You have to follow those classic art teachings. You can't, you can't sell a great idea with bad design. These are the gym reps. But I'm also encouraging you to embrace your past, your memories. What was your favorite toy? Did it get broken? Was it repaired? What was the smell? What was the texture? Really dwell on that. The experiences, the experiences of my past 
are the tools of my future when it comes to designing. But going back to that earlier question, how can I do what you do? You can't do what I do. These are my memories, my experiences, my fireflies. But there's an inner child in all of us. A child that loves toys, movies, ice creams, Saturday morning cartoons. And if what I've said resonates and encourages you to dream, encourages you to turn around and reconnect with that inner child, that younger, playful version of you, perhaps you can find a way to catch and use your own fireflies. Thank you.